I don't know how long ago. I think it took me because I'd never installed it whatsoever. So I was reading yeah, the docs, course. go you know, and, and the the docs are incredibly extensive. Oh, One yeah, of the things right I, I do love about this distro is it has by far the most extensive docs. Like people, people talk about how great the arch wiki is, and the arch wiki is great. But I yeah. think that this one deserves the credit a lot more. I think it's just because oh yeah, it, it's just because it's it it's this source distro, and a lot of people are like scared of looking at it, and so it, a lot of people <laughs> just don't realize how good it is. But because of uh, my understanding, is the reason why the project was made in the first place is basically to automate LFS to like get you from that you know that bootstrap part into like just. Here is the baseline to start getting everything working. So you're gonna, yeah, yeah. gonna have a lot of control over like what you're doing. So you need good documentation for that. And it, it's clear yeah. that over the years that's been developed. But I think it took me about three hours to do everything. And that was mainly yeah, I mean, because that's... I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, the best thing about the Gentoo Wiki by far is kind of the Arch Wiki has a rule that you can't really repeat yourself. So it links to every page links to loads of other pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the like Gentoo handbook is very like cohesive. It's all in one document. So it's very easy to follow. So like, but yeah, I see your point. Like when people were scared of Gentoo, because like I was as well. Um, I only installed it for the first time like two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, because oh, that's a funny one because um, I got my new ThinkPad. And I watched the Imolo streams. So he made a poll, which is a very fair poll of five options, um, which consisted of Gentoo, 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 and Gentoo. Yeah, pretty so good poll. Yeah, I like it. Was, it. Yeah, it's very, very fair. Very, very fair. <laughs> and um, so I was forced to install Gentoo. Yeah, it's, it's not as hard as people think. It's, it's probably around the same difficulty as Arch, like if you're not doing Arch install. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, the thing about Arch Install though, <clears throat> every other update Arch Install breaks. I last <laughs> time I used it, it just didn't work at all. The first time I used it, it didn't work at all. There was this brief period where it worked really well, but it seems like there's just always these massive changes being made to it. They're not really sure yeah. how much they want it to do, how they want it to do it, so and I don't know how yeah. tied the UI is into the functionality because it seems like every time the UI changes, some of the backend functionality changes as well. So <laughs> I'm sure I could it, work it out. It's just a Python script, but I have yeah. a feeling things are very, very coupled together. I uh, I used that script once, um, and every time I made a choice I wanted to change, I go to change it and it crashed the script. Yep. So uh, I don't was, know if you. Was... Did you ever use it back when it first, first came out? I didn't. This was after that. Okay. When it first came out, it had zero error detection. So if you entered... <laughs> so if there was a prompt that was like, hey, uh, yes or no, and you say P, it just crashed. <laughs> yeah, that's like old, our old installer was like that. Um, our old installer was a bash script, and the way to change options was to edit the bash script. Um, so and like the most glaring issue. Um, so for example, like a, if you attach like a SATA disk to Linux, it's going to be like SDA1 mm -hmm. or SDA even. Whereas if you attach an NVMe, when you add a partition, it has like a P1. Well, we didn't account for that at all because like, you know, so if you put in like an NVMe disk to the first installer we made, it wouldn't work. And there was no errors at all. So it would just fuck up your disk. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was great. My and that's why I have software, virtual machines. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, at this point, I only worked on virtual machines, so... Right. Before you mentioned getting a new ThinkPad, do you actually mean a new ThinkPad or a new for you ThinkPad? <laughs> uh, T410. Quite old. Okay. I was going to say. Yeah. And um, LVM took around two and a half hours, I think. T410. Where does that put us at? Uh, 2011. 2011. Uh... ThinkPad. Let me see the specs. Unless you happen to know like, the specs off the top of your head. It'll be like a first gen i5 and like four gigs of RAM mine has. This is a terrible website. It says i7. That's not very useful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I put a 13th gen i7 in my ThinkPad, obviously. Uh, here we go. i5 540M, i7 620M. I I'm guessing it's either yeah. the 520 or the 540, one of the two. Yeah, I've got like a 620, so I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of the two. <laughs> so a 
a old CPU, but still relatively competent, I guess. Relatively. It works. Um, yeah, I mean, it was my first, like, intro to Gensu, so it's kind of like, that normalized my, my brain's thinking, three hours LLVM. <laughs> so it wasn't like it was long for me, it was just kind of, oh, okay. Oh, my dog's barking, sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think G WebKit GTK, which is like the web engine for Gnome stuff, <laughs> took roughly a day, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and if you can imagine building Xenia specs on that, mm -hmm. um, which at the time started from a stage one, not even a stage three. So you'd have to do stage one, three, and four. Mm -hmm. Probably took like two days to do a Xenia build. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> for anyone who fine. hasn't done Gen 2, I guess, <laughs> I think most people probably assume it's going to be as slow as using something like the T14. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. modern, what is your CPU on your the the system with the the forty series GPU? I I use a Ryzen five fifty six hundred. Okay, so it's it's a new CPU, but it's not like a high end CPU. Oh yeah, I mean it's not even that new anymore, is it? They've released AM five and stuff. So it's I, like... I what? Yeah, no, I, I, my my headspace is like three years ago, isn't it? When did that come out? Because <laughs> I've got a thirty six hundred X, so mine's even yeah. Ryzen yeah, I mean, well, it'd be roughly equivalent to yours. Yeah, like a, a yeah, because at that time the the even numbers I think were um, the mobile chips. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like four thousand series. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 4, <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm not finding the number. Whatever. It's yeah, it, it's hey. kind of old now. I think is seven thousand the current series, or is there a newer one after that? Yeah, so it skipped six thousand because that was like mobile, mm. and then seven thousand six hundred. Technically, there's eight thousand series now, but it's just like single cpu i think uh okay so so yeah. on that system how long if you obviously if you account for someone being new to the documentation not really knowing what they're doing yeah. how long do you reckon it'll take a new person to install gen 2 just from scratch assuming they so, have at least knowledge of how to use the command line they know how to read right, yeah, it, yeah. you know <laughs> i mean if we assume they're going to use some like window manager to avoid web engine stuff um I'd say it's it's going to take anywhere from like an hour to three hours, depending on how used to like the command line you are and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like if you're it's coming from Arch or something like that, or you you know you're, oh, you're yeah. just used to using command line, it's not going to be yeah. Like you could yeah, yeah you could be up with a desktop in like an hour. It's um it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. That is still like. It's still a lot of time for some people, and it. it I think uh, yeah. the the big thing that is scary for some is going from a distro where all of the stuff is pre-configured to you, uh, pre-configured yeah. for you, and then going to something, you know, where it's just like, well, now I have to write a bunch of configs. Like if I was yeah. to move over to Gentoo, nothing would change. I would install Hyperland. I would install all the same yeah. software I have, and I'll just get pull my configs, and I would have a system yeah. pretty quickly. So I went from Fedora to Gentoo, so sort of the central thing. Um, but like, you kind of get used to it as you go along. Like, you don't do everything at once. You kind of just get your desktop. Okay, cool. And then you figure stuff out as you go along. It's it doesn't you know it's not like some big commitment where you've got to get everything right the first time. Mm. It's it's very uh, it can be like fairly easy actually. Mm. Yeah, I started way back on i three when I first started. I think the only oh. thing. Yeah, I don't like manual tilers. They're not fun. No, but no. Um, I think the only thing with a, a window manager especially is just make sure that you have a couple of things set up firstly. Application launcher, <laughs> terminal. <laughs> Assuming you have yeah. those on hotkeys, you'll be fine. Do not open up yeah. a window manager without at least an application launcher. Especially ones where they don't have context menus, because you're just gonna not be able to do anything. You're like, why do I have a black I mean, screen right now? Or oh, just control alt like F3 into another TTY. You could do that, right. yeah. Who needs a desktop? <laughs> yeah, don't even, don't even have an application launcher. Just run the uh, command to connect directly to the Xorg display and just open up applications like that. All you need a window manager for is to display your desk, like your background. Who, who needs anything else? 